So before I bought my X100V, I scoured the internet through YouTube, through blogs, whatever, what have you, trying to find information about their TCL um, X100 and their TCL X100 II adapters, which is their teleconversion lens. Um, it takes your 23 millimeter F2, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent, to a 33 millimeter F2, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent. Um, and as I was searching for everything, I just found the same two things, and they were just random anecdotal tests and things like that, or in information and opinions from people who hadn't used the lens saying that it would never be sharp enough as XYZ lens or this lens or that or that it was horrible and image quality was bad and it ruined the resolution which um, from using it that makes no sense at all and you can tell people had never used this lens before but were making opinions or it was people who had used the lens and used it to shoot charts or landscapes wide open and so when you do things like that it kind of concerns me because who the hell is shooting um, landscapes wide open and saying you know what how is the corner sharpness in that? And how is the sharpness throughout the frame? You're an idiot. So, with that being said, I decided to take my X100V and I decided to go ahead and purchase myself a TCL X100 adapter. Now, this is not the Mark II, but don't worry, the TCL X100 II, the only difference between the first Mark I and the Mark II is the fact that the Mark II has a little magnet near the inside um, that actually tells the camera, hey, this is a tele lens conversion, uh, or tele conversion lens. Um, and the good thing is on your TCL uh, X100 Mark I, you can actually um, put a magnet on the inside yourself and rig it to where it does the exact same thing. So you can save yourself a couple hundred bucks with that. First couple of things whenever I got this that uh, again showed me that searching the internet is and uh, hearing of other people's opinions is wildly completely different than what your opinion may be is the fact that everything I heard was that it makes the camera bulky, makes the camera large, and makes the camera heavy. Let me tell you right now, this in no way, shape, or form makes the camera heavy whatsoever. I mean, compared to just plain, nothing else on it, just the camera with, you know, no accessories, and this, it literally adds little to no weight. You can't notice it. No, it does not mess up the ergonomics in the feel. I do have a LensMate thumb grip on the back that I received when I purchased this, but no, it does not throw off the weight of the body. No, it is not too large. The element looks large on the very, very front, but when it comes to the actual size, it is actually a little bit shorter um, than if you had the 23F2 on your X Pro body and um, if you had a little hood on there. So no, it is actually not, um, too big at all it's not too wide it fits very well people say it makes it front heavy i i just don't understand it maybe it's because i have larger hands maybe it's because i lift weights i just don't get it or maybe it's because i choose not to complain and make um a big deal out of absolutely nothing but no it actually doesn't affect the weight and the feel of the camera at all if anything i kind of like the look of this with it on there. It kind of gives it a little bit more of a vintage look with, which a lot of people like about Fujifilm cameras. I didn't get into Fujifilm for the aesthetic, but I have to say the aesthetic is very nice. So I like this. Now in my time of using it, um, which I've only been able to take it out a couple times, I'm gonna use it a few more times during the week, but this is just for me to give you kind of my first impression of it. And after my first use of it, learning how to use it and learning what you know would be better for me. Uh, at my first chance of using it, one thing I have to say is, um, when it comes to acquiring focus and hitting focus um, in great light and things like that, when you have great lighting, constant lighting, etc., it works just fine. There's really nothing different going on. It's not really struggling or anything. It just it comes in. It works. You can't even hear it focusing. It just comes in and it works. There's nothing else to say about it. So when people are saying, oh, you know, it's slow and it's struggling, maybe it was struggling in the X100T, maybe it was struggling in the X100F, maybe it's because you had eye autofocus on the whole time and it, you didn't have an eye in to focus on. I mean, I don't know where the issue came with it. Maybe it's because I've updated my X100V and it's gotten better with this, but no, there isn't really an issue whenever it comes to actually being able to acquire focus whatsoever. Um, in the situation where I shot this weekend, um, the model I was shooting with I actually had a very dimly lit room because I was using flash and trying to get some Rembrandt, but also um, I just wanted to not spill as much onto the back wall because we're going for a certain look um, that she had looked up. And so um, I wanted to make sure that everything was dark in there. I didn't have a whole bunch of spill light except for from my softbox. And with that, it was very, very low um, lighting. Now, when I was using the EVF, 
um, to be able to focus and to be able to compose everything. Um, I did hit a little bit of a snag. Uh, there was sometimes to where when I had it on autofocus, um, if she had her hair hanging over to the side, it would really struggle trying to find her eye. Um, but whenever she had her hair back and there was enough light, it would focus. Um, I shoot a lot of times, actually at all times, um, in studio situations from 5.6 to f8 to f10. Um, so focus wasn't an issue for me. So when I tried the EV using just a zone focus and putting a block around her face it always hit she was always in focus looks good enough it would work for print material as well as um, um, CAC for this which is great for the X100 but if you use the optical viewfinder it actually nails focus every single time because you're actually able to use the ambient light in the room um, and you're you know the camera just did a way better job focusing with the optical viewfinder um, and so it wasn't bad at all now whenever it comes to image quality sharpness and things like that I did not notice a fall off at all um, from using this I did some test portraits at home not only shooting with just the conversion lens this physical one but also I used the digital conversion um, to take this from a 50 millimeter to 72 millimeter and 100 millimeter and did not see a drop off in resolution um, the 6 megapixel output of the 100 millimeter focal length if you have this on there which it's digitally able to get you to that kind of 100 millimeter look which is just a crop um, actually is more than enough to have an 8 by 10 portrait of someone printed um, and hung up on your uh, at your house so if it's something that you need to or you need that kind of compression a little bit more or that simulated compression it actually is a very viable option especially because the image doesn't degrade because the center of this lens uh, of this conversion lens is actually super duper sharp especially with the X100 V's new lens which is super duper sharp which as my boy Dorian Coleman says may be the best 23 millimeter f2 out in the game right now um, and so there is a lot of advantages to using this especially with the digital convert uh, the digital crop in here the 72 millimeter the 100 millimeter it just gives you a lot of options and if you're someone like me who has their my menu page set up to where you can reach these things right away you're not even have to dig into it and you're not having to waste one of your function buttons based all around the camera on that and so I shot this uh, with JPEG plus raw the straight out of camera JPEGs looked really nice um, you know had some issues with flash and things like that um, can't really put my fingers on it where sometimes it was warmer sometimes it was cooler I don't really care because I work with raw just color balance go for it just take a great card with you um, you'll be able to balance it up well enough but from the raws everything was fantastic there was a lot of detail there was a lot of detail on the skin um, it wasn't mushy things weren't too smoothy and patchy as I like to call them to where um, you have a lot more worms in certain images um, the benefits of flash being able to gather detail because of the intensity of the light hitting it was still a benefit with this um, you know I did have to draw back a little bit when it comes to um, touch-ups and clarity and things like that um, but again it's an amazing lens that you're getting a lot of detail you're getting a lot of micro contrast still which I actually think is better with this lens than with the native lens um, you're getting a little bit of deeper micro contrast in that not something noticeable until you start to crop and until you start to adjust your highlights and your shadow slider and um, balance that out with your contrast slider if you're someone who uses a um, curve when you're adjusting blacks and use a curve in that direction you won't notice it as much because you're not doing things as global but when you do things that are global adjustments you actually see a little bit more when it comes to micro contrast um, just because you're seeing how much things are affected and you're seeing across the spectrum what's being affected so I'm sharing those images right now with you she did a great job um, and um, she's fat fantastic model she knew exactly what she wanted to do she knew some looks she wanted to give up um, and so it's easy being able to work with her knock this out within less than an hour and to be able to get on her way um, and so a fantastic job by her but um, part of it too was I was just really amazed at the lens. The lens did a great job and again not a heavy lens. People are making this thing sound like oh it's cumbersome, oh it's heavy, oh it's going to get in the way. It really doesn't. Even whenever you're looking through the optical viewfinder, I mean it's covering up maybe um, I would say a third or probably a quarter of the bottom of the frame. Um, if you're someone who's shooting portraits, um, you're not really going to have to worry about this because it's not covering any um, um, I guess prominent part of the frame which would need to be viewed um, and so there is always that but it's a it's a fantastic camera I can't really say anything negative about the way the camera functions with the lens um, even more I I am excited to use this out if the weather wasn't bad um, I wouldn't be shooting in the studio but I'm excited to use this out in daylight and things like that to see first off if I need a lens hood to see how bad the flaring is especially in backlight which I don't shoot in often but a lot of people tell me I should because apparently a lot of people like to shoot in backlight um, but 
when it comes to this, um, the lens is great. First impressions are the lens is fantastic. It's going to work. The focus works great. Um, it always hit focus. Things were always sharp. Very, very sharp. Great micro contrast. Um, if it's good enough for studio, I'm just telling you right now, it's going to be good enough um, for out and about in an external environment because studio really brings out the worst in your lenses. If you have a lens with a whole bunch of purple fringing or chromatic aberration, when you're having someone dress in high fashion or with a flash going and there's a lot of highlight exposure on a subject going from a dark background to a bright background where there's being outlines and there's a line of line across hair, across patterns, um, where you're having stitching patterns, things like that, you're gonna see a lot of the worst parts of a lens in these situations. And this conversion lens, just like the 23F2, the, the native lens on here, does a fantastic job of controlling all of that and also giving you a really good image. And I think a lot of people are being misled by the old videos on this that have to do with, you know, unfortunately, older bodies that maybe may not have had a grade of lens formula. But even more than that, I think people are just led astray because everyone has this expectation that, um, okay, because this is a small camera body, number one, that's probably one of the biggest things is the small camera body. It only has one SD card slot. No one wants to give this camera its props, the things that it can do. For the fact that I could be shooting at one one thousandth of a second, one of uh, two thousandths of a second with that same flash, especially outdoors. No one wants to give the, uh, cameras like these their credit, especially when they're APS-C or Fujifilm, or they're not labeled as a professional camera by a whole bunch of wannabe professionals out there. You don't give the camera or the accessories the credit it deserves um, based on the, the work it can put and the output that comes from this camera that pleases your client. And that is an issue because when you take a lens like this, a conversion lens, and put it on a body like this, and I can now get a 50 millimeter effective focal length that is not only clean, that is not only sharp, but has amazing color rendering. There is no color shift from in, to, from in here um, to the natural lens. Uh, there is no shift in uh, blacks or anything like that. If anything, they're a little bit deeper. There's just not a lot of um, issues coming from this lens. It's a very clean lens optically that really enhances whatever you have behind it. Uh, meaning whatever generation of, of lens is on your X100 camera, uh, when you have things like this, this should be seen as a benefit. And I would go one step further, you know, if Fujifilm comes out with, a, my idea for Fujifilm is to come out with three X100 lines next, um, come out with an X118, which would give you a 28 millimeter effective focal length, an X123, which was a 35 millimeter focal length, which is this, an X135, which is a 50 millimeter focal length. Um, if they don't do that, um, I would be more than happy with having this and actually purchasing a second X100V um, just to do all of my work. That would be more than good enough for me. Um, I, I would have two cameras, I'd have more enough, I'd buy a WCL adapter if I need it. But this is fantastic. Uh, it works, it does its job, which as a photographer, a lot of times we put these things out there like, oh, I want, I want to check this box and check this box and check this box. And we're checking all these boxes and we're not checking the most important box, which is will it get the job done? And for a lot of us, getting the job done should be exactly not the bare minimum but it should be the main objective and if it can get the job done and then the second thing most important thing should be will it uh, break the bank and it doesn't break the bank then we can start seeing all these other things and say okay does this outweigh this or the other because the thing is with a 35 millimeter f2 or a 33 millimeter 1.4 or a 35 millimeter 1.4 from fujifilm versus this lens if I was to put them all together with all the shots that I've taken for them versus this, or if I was to pull out my X-Pro2 and then shoot on 35 F2 and do some juxtapositions with things like that, you wouldn't be able to see the difference, period. You would have to assume, you would have to really look for things and pixel peep. And again, when it comes to clients, nine times out of 10, you're sending them the JPEGs after you're done with your edits. They're not getting raw, they're not getting a full resolution, they're getting basically a compressed image of what actually came from the camera. And even more, when it comes to a print, no one can click, right click, um, or command plus, 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 and zoom in on a print image. So a lot of times you have to start thinking about, okay, what will get the job done? What is the most fiscally responsible for me and and what is feasibly um, the best option for me to get the job done with something I'm comfortable with. And right now, I'm comfortable with this. Again, if it didn't do the job, if it didn't do right, if I didn't, if I had a lot of chromatic aberration, if I had a lot of fringing, if I had an issue where it was uh, taking away the contrast and it was making things milky, if I had not an issue where there was a flare up even whenever using flash in a studio environment, if I had an issue where there was warp, if I had an issue to where things weren't sharp, if things were 
literally soft to the point to where it doesn't look like it's even like a vintage lens kind of soft, but just a soft, soft can acquire focus soft. If there was an issue with focusing to where I could never hit my focus, that would be something I would bring up because that helps with a buying decision. Those are things that actually matter. But whenever it comes to the fact that um, the biggest thing that is always a knock against this lens is the fact that, well, it's a conversion lens. It's not a real lens or, well, it's on a body that has only one SD card slot. It's not professional. It doesn't have two SD card slots. Or it's the fact that people say, well, you know, it's kind of slow. It's not as great as a WCL, et cetera, et cetera but it gets the job done. And again, all those things that I use, none of that affected me. Um, I gotta say that we gotta stop moving the goalposts for certain things because we make excuses for the 33 1.4 and its shortcomings, the 50 millimeter 1.0 and its shortcomings, the 50 to 140, which probably doesn't have any shortcomings, but you understand what I'm saying. We make excuses for other things, but we're really hard in judgment on some things. And this just reminds me of, you know, the same way we make an excuse for the feature sets, the SD cards, the non-weather ceiling, etc., etc., whenever it comes to Leica cameras, but we shit on the Nikon Z series with the Z6 and Z7, even though for professional work, those were better options than the Leica M, M bodies. Um, and in the same vein, we'll hype up, you know, um, a camera like the XC4 that it can do everything. It can do all this stuff right here. But whenever it comes to the XS10, I know a lot of people because the scroll wheels may only function and control um, film simulations or because it has a grip or because it has an ISO button and it doesn't look the part of a Fujifilm camera, we're very hard on the XS10, but we give a pass to the XE4 because, well, I can make it a mini like a Q. So a lot of times when we're critical about this or photographer or criti critical about things, unfortunately, it's from things that don't really matter in a vacuum. Now, when it comes to pricing, when it comes to actual performance and if things are a super hindrance when it comes to things being you know um, just not well built yeah let's bring that up and to answer that this is well built this performs fantastically and when it comes to the price i got this thing for 140 dollars this was a still this is the version one but even the mark ii is 240 when you compare it to the fact that a 33 1.4 or a 35 1.4 or a 35 f2 the lowest price out of all those used that you see on the market is usually around 320 to 350 dollars this is a still of a thing to do. You don't have to buy a second body. You can just keep this, put this on there. This even works with your older X100Ss, your X100Ts, your X100F. So if you buy the black version of any of those, which they have, I believe every single camera has a black version from Fujifilm, whether they're special edition or not. I saw an X100S with like 1100 um, shutter actuations for about $400 on Facebook Marketplace recently. It can be used with this. It'll still perform well also. Now, if you're gonna pixel peep, you may be disappointed. But whenever it comes down to it, does the damn thing do the job? The damn thing did the job. And I'm super happy with it. The fact that it's small enough, I can carry it all right here in this little Ona bag. Um, the fact that I can carry this in my Peak Design um, field pouch and be able to go out for the day. I'm excited to use this, especially as I have some things coming up. And so this is um, this is good. This works for me. I didn't have to pull out the X Pro 2, um, you know, and um, I didn't even have to pull out the GFX. This was more than enough. It delivered great quality. It delivered great quality that will be represented in great prints. And, um, you know, it made a client happy. That's all that really matters. So when it comes down to the grand scale of things, my first impressions is this is a major, major, major go. Shout out to my mentor, Flossy Carter. I'll be back more with more uses of this to show you guys with some stuff with it, whether it's portraits, which I'm mainly focusing on this year, but also with some street photography, hopefully from LaGrange, Texas, uh, this weekend with the boy Leica Lee. And so I hope you guys check that out and uh, have a good one.